I want you to take your Bibles, please. Open to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. I'm going to read a verse of Scripture here. And I'm going to preach from it, Lord willing, and uh, bring you the message. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I want you to look at verse number 22. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 22. The Bible says here, For as in Adam, that's all of us, all die. All die. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Everybody that's in Adam dies. Everybody that's in Christ shall be made alive. I want to preach this morning on the subject, How will you die? How will you die? The Bible said in Psalm 49.10, The wise man dies, the fool dies, everybody dies. The Bible said in Hebrews 9.27, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. The question this morning is not if, it's how and when. The question is not if. I don't think that dawned on me till I was 30 or 35 years old. Young people think they're never going to die, but you are. Everybody, unless the Lord comes in our lifetime, will die. The chances are 100%. Uh, a man has learned much who has learned how to die. There's four people die in this world, uh, or I'm sorry, over two die every second in this world Somewhere, 60 million a year die. The truth is, we're all lined up. Imagine this big old line of people, and they're just falling off the edge, falling off the edge, and we're standing in line. The other day, I had to go to the tag office, get my tag renewed, and I walked in there, and I thought, man, I've come at the wrong time. There was a line all the way around. And I said, well, I ain't got no choice. I'll just stand here. And then a minute, I was over here. And a minute, I was over here. Then a minute I was over here, and next thing she said, next, and there's my turn. And that's the same way it is about dying. You think you're way back in the line, but your turn will get here much quicker than you might think that it will. I think, I believe, that in high school and college, there should be a required class on death. Death 101. Everybody's going to die. Why is that never mentioned? You're not educated until you understand you're going to die and how to prepare to die. There should be a class on marriage, I believe, in college, required, telling people how to, uh, how to live or spend your money and stuff. But there should definitely be one on death. Death, 101. They say, well, we want to prepare these young people for when they get out into the world. You know what they're going to do when they get out in the world? They're going to die, every single one. Every single one's not going to be a doctor. Every single one's not going to be a lawyer. Every single one's not going to be a, a, a politician or a preacher. But every single one of them is going to die. The wages of sin is death. And that's why we die, because of sin. You will never quit, cause people to quit dying until people quit sinning. Well, if, you, if a person never sins, they'd never die. But there's no such thing as a person who has never sinned except for the Lord Jesus. What is your life, the Bible said? It's a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. All right, everybody listen. My question this morning is how will you die? It's not if. We done got that settled. And when, you might have some control over that. But you have no control over if. The question is how? I present to you three ways that people die. I hope you'll get it fixed this morning and get your life ready. Number one, there's an untimely death. An untimely death. In Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 17, the Bible said, Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish, for why shouldest thou die before thy time? And according to the Bible, you can die before your time. 
Somebody said, you can't go till your time come. Well, no, you know, really, you, according to that, you can. You, you, you can die before you should have. There's plenty of young people die. Their 10-year-olds die. Their 8-year-olds die. Their 4-year-olds die. There are 20-year-olds die. Matter of fact, uh, the biggest crowd of people, some of them that will die today, are by abortion, still in their mother's womb. Over 1 million per year die. 4,400 just in this country a day, million just in this country alone, die of abortion. That's an untimely death. They never even got a chance to uh, be in this world and make their own decisions and grow up. What? That's an untimely death. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 16, the Bible said there is a sin unto death. There's a sin, whatever it might be, that you can commit and commit and commit and commit, and if you won't repent, it will kill you. It will be unto your death. A man's life can be shortened because he won't get right with God and because of sin. In Job 36 and verse 14, the Bible said they die in youth. It's sad, but it's true. Uh, there was a king brought a prophet in one time, and this guy was a prophet. He was in this old uh, kingdom way back in the dark ages somewhere, and this guy was a prophet, and he could predict things and predict things, and somebody, they said, do you really believe he can predict things? And they said, oh yeah, he can predict things and tell you when it's going to happen. And so uh, uh, the king brought him in one time, and they had him in chains, and they was going to kill him. Because the king didn't want nobody living in the kingdom that had that much power and the respect of the people. So he said, I'm going to have you killed if you can't prophesy. So he brought him in one day and he said, yes, king. He said, all right, I want to hear you prophesy. Let's hear you predict the day that you're going to die. And a guy looked back at him and he said, uh, it has not been revealed to me the day that I'm going to die. However... It has been revealed to me that it will be the day before you die. And he let him go. <laughs> if you ever get in that mess, remember that story. Uh, but uh, uh, he said, uh, and the king said, I, I believe I'll just let you go, man. Uh, so, you know, the truth is, he didn't. Now, I did read about one man by the name of Arnold Schoenberg. He was an Austrian composer. You might have heard of him. And uh, he wrote, and this story said, I can't verify it. That's what the story said. The story said all his life he was obsessed with the number 13. He was born on September 13, 1874. And all his life he believed that he would die on the 13th. Obsessed with that number 13. And he said it would probably be on a Friday. Friday 13th. And he said it would probably be in 1951, which would be he was 76 years old, 7 and 6, uh, 13. And sure enough, that day came. They said that day came, he stayed in bed all day, waiting to see if the death angel was coming. And about late that night, his wife come in to check on him, and she said she came in to check on him. He sat up in the bed and said one word, Harmony and fell over and died. And he died. She looked at the clock. It was 11.47, 13 minutes before midnight on Friday 13th. That's an odd, sort of a weird story. But ladies and gentlemen, that would uh, there are some untimely death. We are not really in the land of the living. We're in the land of the dying as what we're in. Uh, one of these days, we will be in the land of the living where nobody dies. But this world here is the land of the dying. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's an untimely death. But let me say secondly this morning, there's an unfearing death. Now, look, y'all got to do this. So you, you need to listen to me. Everybody's going to face this. There's an unfearing death. This is one of the greatest Blessings about being a Christian, we can face death and not be afraid. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For centuries, men have tried to avoid, tried to escape, tried to figure out a way around, and try to act tough and not be afraid to die. I've seen people die or on their deathbed or close to dying, and they'll get scared and they'll say, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I'm not ready. Why? I'm scared. 
Preacher, help me. I'm, I've seen people leave this, or get ready to leave this world and were literally terrified. They, you know why a, piece, a person feels like that on their deathbed? Because they've wasted their life. If you waste your life and don't live for God and don't serve God and do right, when you come time to die, all of those sins come back on you. One man said that he was in an accident and he thought he was going to die and he said, in a split second, my whole life played in front of my eyes. He said, every bad thing I'd ever done, every place I'd ever went wrong, listen this morning, it all comes back. A lot of people out here saying, oh, just live for today, man, live it up. There's going to come a time when you're going to get ready to leave this world and all them sins, everything's going to pile back on top of you and you're going to say, I wish I'd have done this, I wish I'd have never done that. Listen, there, there is a way you can die unafraid and that's get right with God now and live right and serve Him. Brother, so when you leave here, you'll have an unfearing death. Susanna Wesley, the great uh, mother of John Wesley and those other 17 or 18, Charles and all the rest of them. You know what she said before she died? Susanna Wesley said, Children, when I'm gone, sing a song of praise to the Lord. Went out like that. That's an unfearing death. She didn't say, I hate life. Why was we even born? This is awful. It's scary. I don't want to die. That's the way movie stars go. That's the way Hollywood actors go. They die afraid. They die doped up. They die out of their mind. Wake up in hell. You know why? They're not ready to die. They're not ready to die. You ever heard of Daniel Webster? You know what Daniel Webster had read during his dying few moments? He had them come in and they read, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stain. And Daniel Webster said in a feeble voice, Amen, amen, amen. Went like that. That's an unfearing death. The old, old fellow wrote a song years ago. It's in all the old song books. And he said, not afraid to bid this world goodbye. Not afraid to close my eyes and die. For this courage I have prayed in his arms. I'm not afraid. That's, an old, that's the way the old timers used to write songs. Not afraid to bid this world goodbye. D.L. Moody, the great evangelist preacher, uh, preached that long ago those many, many years. And when D.L. Moody died, the day he died, you know what he said? He said, this is my triumph. This is my coronation day. It is glorious. Listen, people, if you got to go, that's how you want to go. Get ready today. Get ready today. Get ready today. We're going to die. Have an unfearing death. You know, probably a lot of people say, oh my goodness, preacher, let's talk about a gross subject. Well, you better talk about it because you're going to do it one day. You're going to do it. You're living in a rotting corpse right now. You're living in a body that's got sin in it and that sin's going to kill you. The wages of sin is death. I'm not always going to be here. This might be the last day I ever live on this earth. I want to be able to close my eyes and say, Death, I'm not afraid. I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep what I've committed to him against that day. Man, we're going to die one time and somebody quoted him that verse. And uh, this guy was dying and he said, 2 Timothy 1 12, you know, it said, uh, I know in whom I have believed. I know in whom I have believed. And the guy stopped him and said, wait a minute. Don't put that preposition in there. It don't say, I know in whom I have believed. It said, I know whom I have believed. He said, the Lord told me if I'd ask him, he'd save me and I believe him. I know in whom I believe, but I know whom I believe. That's what the verse said. And ladies and gentlemen, that's an unfearing death. Adoniram Judson, the famous missionary, you know what he said? I've been studying this stuff because my time's coming and yours is too. And I want to be ready. I want to be ready. You're supposed to have your taxes done before April 15th. You're supposed to have your bills paid on a certain day of the month. You're supposed to have it. Somebody said, well, ain't nothing sure but death and taxes. Taxes, I mean, you ain't even sure from a lot of people. Uh, they, they don't pay them. But I tell you what you're going to do. You're going to die one day. You're going to die one day. And Adoniram Judson said this. They said, you're dying. He said, I am not tired of my work. I'm not tired of the world. I'm happy with my life. Yet, when Christ calls me home, I shall go with the gladness 
of a boy bounding home from school. He said, I, I love my life. I love my ministry. But when he calls me, I'm going to be just like a kid got out of school for the last day. You remember that feeling? I remember the last day of school. Woo! We get on that bus. I'm ready to go. I, I mean, I, I had fun at school. We played ball half a day and goofed around the other half. And boy, I remember we, we I, but I was glad when I got out. Listen, I love my life. I love my ministry. I love our church. I love my family. I love what God's given me to do. But I want to be able to say, if he calls me, I want to go home like a little boy getting out of school. That's the way you want to go. Now, you may be sitting there saying, Brother Danny, I just can't feel like it. I I think, I mean, I believe you and everything, but I don't want to leave this world. Now, I know that. We're all, there's something in us that don't want to die. That's human nature. But if you'll get eternity in mind and think everything over there is 10 million times better than what we got here, and all you're going to have down here is sorrow and heartache and sickness and pain and heartbreak, brother, get, a, get to the place where you'll have an unfearing death. Unfearing death. An unfearing death. I want to face death with calm assurance and say I know in whom I have believed. Never so happy, an old saint of God said. They said there's a shadow. Of, he said there ain't no shadow of death here. It's full of light. There's green pastures, living waters. I've never been so happy since I was born. Glory, glory be to the triune God and went home to be with the Lord just like that. F.B. Meyer, the famous preacher, before he left this world, he, he found out he's going to die. And he was a long way off somewhere and wrote a letter to his wife and said, uh, Dearest wife, he said, I've just been informed I have a few days to live. Maybe before this reaches you, I'll be gone. Don't bother to write back. We shall meet in the morning. You know what he told his wife? He said, no, Don't cry. It ain't no, you getting all tore up. I'll see you in a little while. Over there on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, is the Lord real to you? Is your Christianity... Listen, if what you've got ain't good enough to die with, it ain't good enough. That's the whole point of being saved. Being able to bid this world goodbye. And hallelujah, got another one to look forward to. Glory to God. An unfearing death. An unfearing death. They say that you can judge a church... Lord, help us on this. They say you can judge a church by how people die in that church. If people die well, it's a well-taught, well in doctrine, well uh, in belief, and people got the peace of God when people die. Well, sister so-and-so left, like Brother Mike, like Brother Ray. We miss him. Uh, them, they're sitting over there. We think about Brother Ray all the time. Oh, Brother Ray, uh, is there still no grace on his grace? <laughs> oh, Brother Ray, you know what he told them? This is no lie. Oh, Brother Ray told him, he said, Jesus will be back before grass grows on my grave. And it's been, what, three years? Two, three years now? And to this day, there ain't no grass growed on his grave. That's true. You can go over there and look. Uh, uh, he's waiting on the Lord to come back. And I'm telling you, hallelujah, brother, well, when we leave this whole world, get it in your heart this morning. Get it in your heart. You know what makes you scared to die? Your conscience is bothering you. Sins. Sins. Live right. Get your heart right. You can have an unfearing death. Finally and thirdly, and I'm through this morning, there's an unprepared death. First, there's an untimely death. There's an unfearing death. And there's an unprepared death. You are in one of them three categories right now. There ain't no other way to leave. Ready, not ready, or too early. That's it. Too early, ready, not ready. An unprepared death. Nothing to joke about. It's serious. It's settled. It's sure. In Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31, the Bible said there was a rich man. And the Bible said this rich man prospered every day. He had, he had all kinds of stuff. And I mean, he was rich, but he was not ready to meet the Lord. And the Bible said Lazarus laid out there at his gate full of sores. And every day, uh, they would see old Lazarus laying there. And he'd just lay in there hoping they'd maybe throw him out some crumbs or something so he could eat the crumbs that fell from that rich man's table. And he said, if somebody can just give me some crumbs. Now the rich man, he didn't go to hell because he's rich. He went to hell because he wasn't prepared. 
And Lazarus didn't go to heaven because he's poor. He went because he was prepared. And every day they went. The Bible said it came to pass that the rich man died and the beggar died and the angels come and got Lazarus and carried him down there to Abraham's bosom. And the Bible said the rich man died. He was unprepared. He had a lot of money. He had stuff. He was clothed in purple and fine linen. He had the best clothes. He had the nicest chariot. He had sheep. He had cows. He had anything he wanted to eat. But he was not prepared. All you that hear this message by way of radio, internet, wherever you are, anywhere on this planet, ladies, it matters not what you own or how much money you got in the bank if you're not prepared to meet God. The Bible said he went to hell and he screamed for a drop of water on his tongue. Unprepared. Are you prepared? If you died right now, would you have to say like Saul, I have played the fool? Or could you say like Paul, I know in whom I have believed? It's quite a difference. That's quite a difference. The rich fool in Luke chapter 12, the Bible said he, he had so much stuff he just looked around for something to spend money on. Know anybody like that? I think I'll just buy me a nice, I'm just going to tie my barns down and build me some nice ones. Got all this money. Man, I'm, I'm doing so good. I don't, but the Lord looked down and he said, you fool, tonight you're going to die. What shall these things do? Who's going to take care of your stuff then? Who's going to, who's going to drive your car then? Who's going to live in your big house then? Well, you're going to leave it to somebody. King Herod in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 21 23. He came out there and made this big speech and he said, look at all this great, wonderful kingdom I've got, blah, 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 bam. Angel of the Lord smote him. He died like that and worms eat him right in front of him. You know why? He gave not God the glory. He died unprepared. Years ago, there was a man in this country named Sir Francis Newport. And he was the head of an atheist club in England. And everybody knew Francis Newport and who he was and what he was. The head of a club of atheists. Much like we have them on TV today. that come out with these smart aleck little cartoons making fun of the Lord and blasphemous shows and getting a big life out of Hollywood joking about the Word of God and Christianity and people that love the Lord and Jesus Christ. And Sir Francis Newport was dying His day came, and their day will come, and your day will come. Are you listening? Your day's going to come, people. Your day's going to come. And he said this, you don't need to tell me there is no God. I know there is one, and I'm in his angry presence. You need not tell me there's no hell. I feel my soul slipping into its fire. Wretches, cease your idle talk about being hope for me. I'm lost forever. He said, don't come around here telling me there's no God. I know there's one. Don't tell me there's no hell. I feel it getting me already. I'm burning already. Don't try to talk like there's hope for me. I'm gone. Voltaire. His doctor looked at him laying on his deathbed and he said, Sir, you can't live six weeks. And he said, I'll give you half of my wealth if you'll give me six months to live. And the doctor said, I can't do it. And he looked back at him with his face and said, Then I'll go to hell and you'll go with me. Listen, people, the people out there in this world that are all wonderful and movie stars and life and, and the beautiful gowns and the limousines and the drugs and they'll go, the day's going to come when they'll be scared to die because they're going to face God and go to hell forever and ever and ever. Listen, listen, this thing, don't be fooled by Hollywood TV, MTV and rock and roll shows and, 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 and the shows on TV and don't envy the, the singer like Beyonce and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Kanye and all them people. Don't envy people like that. The day's going to come when they'll breathe their last breath, go into eternity without God if they don't get saved. Joseph Stalin was the (laughs) dictator, leader of Russia, communist Russia, up until 1953. And his daughter 
in up in a book said quote my father died a different difficult and terrible death God grants easy death only to the just she said his last few seconds on earth she opened his eyes with a scared almost insane look on his face and his eyes glanced around the room at everybody in the room scared and he said he lift up his left hand like he was pulling something down on him and she said we felt like he was pulling a curse down on us and he died like that and went to hell gone I read a story just this week of a lady who spent her life nursing and helping people get back to help. She said she had a Masonic atheist in her care. She said when that man died, he died kicking and screaming, terrified. Years ago, you used to hear all kinds of stories like this. You used to hear people say, man, that old man down yonder was an atheist and everybody in the neighborhood could hear him screaming. See, years ago, people died like they lived. Now they got everybody so doped up that they don't even realize. Some of them don't even remember going in the hospital and the next thing they know, they're in hell. They don't even get to die knowing where they're going. She said he died screaming. Nothing to joke about. When you die, are you going to die like Saul? I played the fool. Or are you going to die like Paul? I know in whom I have believed. And that's why I try to get you to live right. That's why I try to get you to be faithful to church and read your Bible. Keep your conscience. Keep your sins confessing. Keep your life right because it's going to come. That day's coming. There may be somebody sitting in here this morning. This is your last church service. Oh, you're trying to scare it. No, I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen it happen before. I've preached it before and had it happen before. I preached one Sunday, a boy come to the altar over here, in, not in this church, come up, got down on the altar, got right with God, and Thursday got killed. Thursday, four days, he got right with God. Four days before he left. That's cutting it a little too close. That's cutting it too close. Oh, you say, Brother Danny, I'm healthy. I've got plenty of time. I've got things I want to do. I will live right. You're going to die an unprepared death. If you're not really, if you're not really careful, how will you die? How will you die? You say, preacher, I'm not even sure I'm saved. I think I am. I pray every now and then. I believe there's a God. I'm gonna tell you something. You need you need to nail it down a lot more sure than that. A lot more sure than that. Let's stand with our heads bowed, please.